What if I told you that the word assassin originates in the sneaky legacy of a man who instilled fear in the hearts of rulers to the extent that they dared not leave home without armor? Today, we are about to journey into the heart of intrigue and power dynamics that forever altered history. Let's step into the shadows of history today to unravel the enigma of Hassan Sabah, the elusive figure who birthed the word that echoes through centuries. This story is filled with so much intrigue that missing some parts would leave your head scratching. So, stay tuned till the end so that you do not miss out on anything. Hassan Sabah, the old man of the mountain. Hassan Sabah, a name often relegated to the fringes of historical discourse, held a prominence far beyond his obscurity. Interestingly, his life and legacy have inspired popular culture, notably the creation of the renowned video game series Assassin's Creed, which draws inspiration from Hassan and his followers' tales. He's also commonly referred to as the old man of the mountain in the game. His significance transcends the whispers of forgotten chapters, for he was a pivotal figure who orchestrated a symphony of change within the political tapestry of the medieval Islamic Caliphate in the Middle East. While history often reserves the spotlight for grand rulers and conquerors, Sabah's legacy is etched in the intricate dance of shadows and whispers, where he wielded influence beyond the reaches of conventional power. Though lesser known, his impact bore the weight of empires and shaped the narratives of political intrigue and power dynamics for almost 200 years. Medieval Islamic World To comprehend the impact of Hassan Sabah's emergence, let's navigate the intricate tapestry of the medieval Islamic world. A realm marked by vibrant diversity, it was a time when cultures converged and faiths intermingled within the vast expanse of Islamic empires. At its zenith, the Islamic world thrived with intellectual fervor, a melting pot of knowledge and innovation. Yet, beneath this facade of prosperity, tensions brewed, carving fault lines that defined the era. Religious divisions were not merely theological. They were fissures that split empires, sparking conflicts that reverberated across dynasties. Amidst the splendor of Islamic civilization, power struggles and conflicting ideologies brewed storms of discord. Previously, after the death of Muhammad, the messenger, the Islamic sect, was divided into Sunni and Shiite. During the medieval era, these sects were getting further subsects. The socio-political landscape was a battleground where empires vied for dominance, and religious sects contended for spiritual authority. Within this volatile milieu, Hassan Saba's ascent took root, harnessing the winds of turmoil to shape his narrative. Early Life of Hassan Saba in the year 1050 CE, amidst the mystical allure of Qom, Persia, Hassan Saba came into this world. Born to a family steeped in scholarly traditions, Saba's upbringing was imbued with an insatiable curiosity and an unyielding thirst for knowledge. His father's scholarly lineage laid the groundwork for Saba's voracious appetite for learning, a trait that would shape his future pursuits. In his pursuit of enlightenment, Saba found solace and intrigue within the folds of Ismaili teachings a branch of Shia Islam. In the rich tapestry of Qom's intellectual atmosphere, Sabah was drawn to the teachings of Ismaili scholars, delving into the depths of their esoteric wisdom and mystical philosophies. This transformed Sabah's perceptions, guiding him away from conventional norms and leading him towards starting a new sect, Nizari Ismailili. His immersion in Ismaili teachings sparked an evolution within Sabah, leading him to question the established dogmas and conventions of his time. As Sabah ventured deeper into unexplored intellectual realms, he emerged as a luminary whose beliefs would lay the groundwork for a revolution within the Ismaili sect. Formation of Nizari Islamilis As the rift within the Ismaili community widened, Hassan Sabah emerged as a visionary leader who orchestrated the crystallization of a distinct sect the Nizari Ismaili, drawing upon his unwavering support for Nizar's claim to spiritual and political authority. Sabah meticulously laid the foundations of the Nizari Ismaili sect, asserting a doctrine that resonated with his revolutionary ideals. At the core of the Nizari Ismaili sect lay principles of spiritual enlightenment, egalitarianism, and a profound reverence for knowledge. Sabah championed the values of tolerance, seeking unity among diverse communities. 
and rejecting the rigid hierarchies of the time. Political struggles. Amidst the sprawling domains of the Seljuk Empire, political tumult simmered, fostering an environment ripe for dissent and opportunism. Internal strife and succession disputes cast shadows over the empire's stability. The vacuum created by the fractured Seljuk authority presented an opening for Hassan Sabah, a shrewd strategist poised to exploit the fissures of power. Sabah navigated the treacherous waters of Seljuk politics, capitalizing on the chaos to establish footholds and fortresses, including the strategically positioned Alamut. The power struggles within the Seljuk Empire inadvertently facilitated Sabah's ascent, allowing him to consolidate his influence and expand his sphere of authority. For Sabah, the Seljuk Empire's disarray wasn't merely a backdrop but a canvas upon which he painted his ambitions, positioning himself as a formidable force amidst the chaos of dynastic disputes. Perched amidst the towering Alborz Mountains, the fortress of Alamut emerged as an icon of strategic importance and symbolic power in Hassan Sabah's pursuit of influence and authority. Amidst escalating tensions with the Seljuk forces and facing expulsion from their borders, Hassan Sabah sought refuge within the formidable walls of Alamut. Faced with adversity, Sabah's strategic prowess came to the fore. Through his charisma and persuasive preaching, he gained the allegiance of the garrison stationed at Alamut, bringing them under his command. This pivotal acquisition of Alamut not only secured a formidable fortress, but also bolstered Saba's influence and power base. It provided a sanctuary and a vantage point from which he could exert his authority over the surrounding regions. Alamut became the nucleus of Saba's operations, a bastion that not only safeguarded his followers, but also served as a center for strategic planning, religious teachings, and military operations. The acquisition of Alamut proved to be a defining moment, solidifying Saba's foothold and laying the foundation for the ascent of the Nizari Ismaili sect under his visionary leadership. Formation of the Hashashin, the Assassin's Creed. Within the fortress of Alamut, Hassan Saba forged an elite group known as the Hashashin, a clandestine order that would etch their name in the annals of history. According to the legend of the famous traveler Marco Polo, Hassan Saba had built the most beautiful garden in the world, which he used to train his followers. He had built three canals in it, resembling the concept of heavens, one of water, one of wine, and one of honey. He drugged them with opium, and upon waking up in the garden, he let them believe that they were experiencing a vision of heaven. After the sleep due to the opium dose, when they again woke up, they were in the real world. Longing to return to that heaven, these young men were brainwashed to become assassins who would kill and even at times die for the cause. Rigorous and relentless, the training of the Hashashin was legendary, encompassing martial skills, stealth, intelligence gathering, and unwavering loyalty to Saba's cause. Their emergence marked a paradigm shift in the art of espionage and targeted assassinations, crafting a mystique around their name that echoed through the corridors of power. Targeted political assassinations. Hassan Saba was not merely a master of physical combat, his arsenal extended to the realm of psychological warfare, a craft that shaped the very foundations of his influence. Employing a tapestry of intrigue and fear, Saba orchestrated an aura of mystery around the Hashashin, leveraging their reputation to instill terror in adversaries. Saba's calculated use of targeted political assassinations struck fear into the hearts of his adversaries, sending a chilling message that nowhere was beyond the reach of his influence. The mere whisper of the Hashashin's involvement in an assassination carried weight, instigating uncertainty and paranoia among Sabah's rivals. Through a blend of precision strikes and the ominous reputation of the Hashashin, Sabah wielded psychological tactics that penetrated deep into the psyche of his enemies, sowing seeds of distrust and vulnerability. The Hashashin's precision strikes sent shockwaves through the corridors of power, sowing a pervasive climate of fear and uncertainty among rulers and political elites. The fear generated by the Hashashin's actions infiltrated the consciousness of rulers, compelling them to rethink strategies, alter routines, and fortify defenses against the unseen threat. Notable assassinations during Hassan's reign. The Grand Vizier under the Seljuk Empire, Nizam al-Mulk, 
was a formidable figure. His assassination not only eliminated a key political opponent, but also destabilized Seljuk's authority, creating a power vacuum. Conrad, a prominent crusader leader, was assassinated by the Hashishin, altering the dynamics of crusader politics in the Holy Land. Legend has it that one night, Saladin, the revered Sultan and leader of the Muslim forces during the Crusades, woke up to find a dagger carefully laid on his pillow or near his bed. Accompanying the dagger was a message warning him of the Hashishin's capabilities and their ability to strike even within the innermost sanctums of power. Raymond II, a significant figure during the Crusades, fell victim to Hashishin assassins, causing disruption and instilling fear among Crusader leaders. Jalal ad-Din, a notable figure resisting the Mongol invasions, faced an assassination attempt by the Hashishin, sending a chilling message to opponents of the Nizari Ismailis. Marzuban, a Seljuk commander, met his end at the hands of the Hashashin, highlighting Sabah's ability to strike at high-ranking military figures. William, another influential crusader, faced the Hashashin's lethal tactics, reshaping alliances and strategies among crusader factions. These were some of the 50 assassinations that took place under the patronage of Hassan Sabah. Hassan Sabah's demise. Hassan died in 1124 after an illness. He chose Buzurgamid, Da'i of Lamassar as his heir, instructing him to take care of the state until the Imam which he believed to come in later years to take possession of his kingdom. He also appointed three deputies, one responsible for propaganda, one for the militia, and one as Buzurgamid's right-hand lieutenant. After Sabah's demise, the Hashashin redirected their attention to Mongol commanders. They attempted assassinations to resist Mongol advances and defend Nizari Ismaili territories. The Hashashin refined their infiltration tactics, gaining access to enemy camps to carry out strategic assassinations. They exploited vulnerabilities within enemy lines. Beyond their traditional territories, the Hashashin expanded their reach, targeting key figures in different regions and showcasing their adaptability in diverse terrains. Even after Sabah's passing, the Hashashin remained a formidable force, adapting their tactics and assassinating more than 200 military commanders and political adversaries. Hassan Sabah's Legacy Sabah's astute maneuvers and Hashashin's strategic assassinations reshaped political landscapes, creating ripples of uncertainty among rulers and altering power dynamics. The Hashashin's reputation for precision strikes and psychological warfare left an indelible mark, instilling fear and caution among adversaries and influencing decision-making for generations. Sabah's ideologies and Hashashin's tactics served as inspiration for various ideological movements, sparking debates on ethics, power, and resistance in politics and philosophy. The Hashashin's tactics of infiltration, psychological warfare, and targeted assassinations continue to echo in modern strategic thinking, studied for their innovative and disruptive nature. The birth of the word assassin. The term assassin traces its etymological roots to the Arabic word hashashin, which refers to the followers of Hassan Saba. The historical use and notoriety of the hashashin's tactics and strategic assassinations gradually led to the term assassin finding its way into the English language. Over time, it became associated with secretive individuals or groups skilled in targeted killings for political or ideological motives. The inclusion of assassin in the English dictionary reflects its evolution from a specific historical context to a term used broadly to describe those who carry out targeted and often clandestine acts of violence or political elimination. This inclusion serves as a testament to the enduring impact and historical significance of the Hashashin and their leader, Hassan Sabah, on language and culture. Hassan Sabah, much like many overlooked figures, embodies the untold narratives that shape our past. Exploring the tales of figures like Sabah isn't merely an exercise in revisiting the past. It's an invitation to embrace diverse perspectives that enrich our understanding of history. Join us on History Duck as we uncover more untold stories, explore forgotten chapters, and delve deeper into the legacies of remarkable individuals. Hit the like button 
and subscribe to our channel for more such historical enigmas. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to keep quaking with us.